Greetings everyone. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to use Wireshark to perform some basic PCAP analysis. The scenario that I'm going to be going through is as follows. You have been given a PCAP file, which incidentally is available to you in a link in the video description, that has a bunch of network traffic from a suspected compromised host. Now, unfortunately, the packet capture solution that generated this PCAP also captured a lot of background traffic that was happening at the time of the incident. So we're going to have to sift through it to find only the relevant exploited traffic and use that to figure out what the compromised host was, as much, as much information as we can find about the compromised host, and to see if we can uniquely identify the malware or malicious activity in question. So let's get started. I've pulled up the PCAP here in Wireshark. Now, I'm using Wireshark 2.6.3, which is the latest version at the time of this video. You can use any remotely recent version of Wireshark. And I'm doing this in Windows, but you can do this in whatever platform you want. So we have this PCAP here, and we can see it's got 25,555 packets. Quite a lot, certainly more than we ever want to go through manually. So we need some tools to help identify what traffic we should look at first to narrow down the scope of our search. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to statistics and conversations and then click on the IPv4 tab. What this is going to do is this is going to give me a unique list of all the IP addresses involved in the PCAP and sort them such as by source and destination IP address. Now, for the purpose of this exercise, I don't even know the IP range of the system I'm looking for. But I can pretty conclusively determine that it's probably going to be an RFC 1918 IP address, which are the internal non-routable IPs, which exist in three segments. There's 10.0.0.0/8, and 192.168.0.0/16. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to identify the IP range in question. I see that there is no 10 dot, so I know it's not that. As I scroll down here, I do see 172.16, and I don't see any 192.168. So now I've identified the internal IP range in this enterprise that generated this PCAP. And I see that there are four unique IP addresses in this range. There's .1, .52, .98, and .172. So now I need to identify the specific IP address I want to look at. If I go to dot one, I will see that the only hosts it communicates with are other hosts in the same subnet, so other internal hosts, this broadcast IP, and this multicast IP. So I can conclusively determine this is not my compromised host because it has no external communications. The next possible host is this dot 52. And we can see that this one has a great deal of external connections. So this is a likely culprit. So let's take a look at it. Now Wireshark makes it very easy to pivot off of this view. I can right click on any packet here, I can say apply as filter, selected, and then A back and forth to any. And as I close this now, you will see that this pre-applied a display filter saying IP.adder, meaning IP.address equals this. Okay, so now I've still got 21,000 packets, which is still way too many to go through. So now the next thing I want to narrow down is to see what protocols this host has been communicating with. So I'm going to go to statistics and then protocol hierarchy. And so what this is going to do, as the name suggests, is show me all the different protocols that this host has been communicating with, or using. So I see UDP here, NetBIOS name service, I don't really care about most of this. DNS could potentially be used for DNS tunneling, but only 27,000 bytes, not really enough for that. The vast majority of the traffic is TCP, and I see some SSL here, but I can't inspect and encrypt the traffic, so this is irrelevant to me. I see a lot of HTTP and a lot of just generic TCP. Now this generic TCP is almost certainly associated with these HTTP transfers. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to dig into the HTTP here and see what I can find. So I'm going to right click here, I'm going to say apply as filter and select it. So what this is going to do is automatically apply this to my filter, but it's going to keep my existing conditions. So now I have my IP address and HTTP. Now, the problem with doing it this way is I do not see what the actual domain names that all these HTTP requests and responses are going to and from. So I'm going to modify this query slightly by saying or DNS here. Okay, so now I have the actual domain name resolution as well as HTTP traffic. So at this point, I've gone as far into Wireshark's tools as I can to help me identify the traffic I'm looking for. At this point, it's basically all about manual traffic analysis. 
and you have to kind of learn what to look for, what looks suspicious, what looks malicious, and so on. And it takes time and experience to develop this heuristic sense. It's really very difficult to teach. So I'm going to go through this here and give you some of my thoughts. I see that these domain name requests are to a lot of Microsoft specific domains. I can be reasonably certain this is probably not a problem. I see Bing here. Okay, whatever, no problem. Bing requests here. Again, more Microsoft Live. They're probably using Internet Explorer or visiting some Microsoft domain, but that's not in itself malicious. Okay, more Bing stuff. Really important Microsoft stuff. Okay, uh, Footprint DNS, I'm not quite sure what that is, but I don't think that's really problematic. Again, more Bing, Footprint DNS, whatever, MS Edge. Okay, so this is the first sort of non-Microsoft, non-legit site that I see. Well, maybe legit, I don't know, channelnewsasia.com. Foreign websites tend to get compromised quite a bit, so this is a potential source to look at, but nothing overtly problematic yet. MediaCorp.sg, whatever, okay, Twitter, more stuff. So these GET requests look potentially fishy. They have certain patterns. This is almost certainly encoded data of some kind or another, um, but nothing looks you know, particularly bad to me. This is from MediaCorp.sg. Uh, it's whatever. Again, weird looking GET requests, some kind of encoded data, but this does not overtly strike me as malicious. And Basically, in order to disprove my theory, I would have to dig into this traffic individually and perform a lot of manual analysis on it to try to figure out if there's anything bad in it. For the purpose of this exercise, I'm just going to tell you that this is not the compromised host. You're more or less going to have to trust me on that one or dig into it yourself. So I'm going to clear my filter here. I'm going to look for the next IP address. I'm going to go back to the six conversations. I'm going to go to the next IP address in line which is this dot .98. Now this one only has one external connection, which is kind of interesting. So I'm going to look at this one now. So select it A to any. And we're going to do the same thing where I go to statistics and then protocol hierarchy. And I'm going to see that this one looks more or less the same as the last one. Um, I see UDP here, DNS again, nowhere near enough for to be DNS tunneling. The vast majority of it is TCP, not much SSL, the vast majority of this is HTTP. So okay, I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before. I'm going to say apply as filter and select it. And then again, I'm going to modify this to say or DNS. Now, so I'm going to go to the top here. Okay. Now, as I scroll through this, immediately I see two things that, to my sense, look highly suspicious. One is I see this DNS request to myexternalip.com. So I can intuit from just the name that the purpose of this site is to identify in an easy way the IP address, the, the external IP address of the requesting system. Now, there is almost no reason for any enterprise workstation to be contacting this domain because they don't host services, so there's no reason for them to know their external IP address. However, it is a pretty common thing for malware to go to this kind of site to determine what IP address it's on. And it does this for two reasons. One, it establishes if they have internet connectivity on their host through a fairly innocuous query. And two, it allows them to identify through geolocation what country they've landed on. And they do this either because they want to target users in a specific country or avoid targeting users in a specific country. So that's suspicious. The second thing I see here is a post to gate.php. Gate.php is the most common exploit kit landing page. Now a landing page, as the name somewhat suggests, is the first page that an exploit kit will redirect a compromised system to to determine how it can exploit that system or a potentially compromised system in any event. So I see gate.php, I see myexternalip.com. At this point, my initial conclusion is that this is my compromised host. It's been compromised by some kind of exploit kit. So I'm going to do a Google search now to see if I can verify my theory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for myexternalip.com and exploit kit. And so what I'm going to see here is I'm probably on the right track. I see a few specific results. I see Angular EK, which has this domain in it. I see Rig Exploit Kit, which has this domain in it. Crypto Wall has this domain in it. There was another one I saw here before in a previous search that said Magnitude EK. I guess it's not showing up in the results now. But either way, it seems like I'm on the right track. That's the point. This is almost certainly an exploit kit 
and uh, I think I found my compromised host. But it's not enough to conclusively determine which exploit kit the system has been infected with. So I need to keep digging. Okay, so now I need to dive deeper into the PCAP to see what else I can find. The first thing I find that again looks kind of weird is these get requests for specific plugins. And I can see as I scroll down here that there are a few of them. I want to look at these a bit later, but I want to mark them so I don't lose my place. So what I can do is I can right click here and I can say mark unmark packet. I'm going to go through and I'm going to find the rest of them. I'm going to mark these for future analysis. So now I can very easily get back to them. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dive into the traffic itself. So I'm going to click on the first post to gate.php here. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to say follow TCP stream. Now what this does is it shows me just the protocol traffic and it shows it in a clear and concise single view. The traffic in red is from my client and the traffic in blue is from the server. So I see here that it's going to service.telepizza.com, okay? And I see this get key equals y. Now again, to me, to my sense, this is clearly suspicious at the very least. It looks like it's requesting some kind of encryption key. And if we look at the server response here, this is very obviously to me some kind of PKCS encoded blob representing a, a cryptographic key. And you can tell it's encode, probably base64 encoded it within here or at least that's what it looks like. Uh, and it's, this is almost certainly the length in bytes, 25a. Now 25a is very close to 256, and if you were to multiply that by 8, you would get 2048. So this is probably a 2048-bit RSA key being stored in a PKCS blob. Now admittedly, I'm making quite a few assumptions here, but it, it kind of checks out given that the client is requesting a key and the size of this data and how it's packaged. So as I go through it, I see another post. Now I see the client sending a key to the server. Now again, my guess is going to be that this key, on top of being encoded, is encrypted with this key. And now I see a response from the server, 18 bytes, probably an acknowledgement of some kind. Again, looks like base64 encoded and almost certainly encrypted. Another request from the client with some data. Another response from the server with probably commands, maybe, that would be my guess. Next request from the client, more data, perhaps a response to the commands. Uh, probably an acknowledgement here from the server, more data from the client, and finally one more acknowledgement from the server. So again, at this point, I have conclusively determined this is definitely my compromised host, and that it is communicating in a somewhat encrypted way with an exploit kit that's hosted on this compromised server. So now I have some more specific things that I can use to figure out what exploit kit this is. I'm going to go back to my previous filter here. So I have the gate.php and I have the get key command. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for that. So gate.php and get key. And as you can see, of course, I've already searched for that. And as I go here, and if you can see, I've already found this too. I found this very neatly titled Cisco Talus Intelligence Blog talking about a modified Zyklon exploit kit. So let's look through here and see if this is relevant to what we've found. This is talking about the, the malware that delivered the exploit kit. I don't care about this for the purpose of this exercise. So what I see here is this neat diagram describing the communications between a compromised host and the server. And we can see that this is more or less exactly what we found. There is this HTTP request to gate.php from the client to the server. Yep, we saw that. There's an RSA key exchange, and there's this gate.php with get key equals y. Now, in what we saw, the order of these two things was transposed. This happened first, then this, and then this is probably the key that the client sent to the C2, not the other way around. But either way, this is we saw exactly these four things, just slightly modified in a slightly different order. The next thing we do is if we keep scrolling down here, we, again, this looks very familiar. These plugin index at PHP getting certain plugins, this is exactly what we saw in the PCAP. So we can go back to the PCAP now, and I want to look at those packets that I marked previously. So the way I can do this is doing frame.marked equals true, oops, not marked, just marked, there we go. So now I have these five uh, packets. We've got browser, email, software, games, FTP. Browser, email, FTP, software, games. So this is definitely a match. I have absolutely identified the malware that the system is compromised with. It is the, the Zyklon exploit kit. Cool. 
So that's one thing done. We have found the malware. The next thing I wanted to do is identify more information about this host itself. So I'm going to go back to the IP address for now. Now, there are a bunch of different ways to potentially get the host name. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look for NBNS traffic, which you can already see here, but just as purpose of showing you the filter, I'm going to say and NBNS. NBNS is the NetBIOS name service. And as we can see, it is sending out packets to the rest of its subnet, registering it as mean gene PC and saying it's part of the, the work, group, work group. So this is the NetBIOS host name of the system here. The second thing I want to do is try to identify the browser and operating system. And the easiest way to do that is by looking at the HTTP user agent string. So I'm going to go back to HTTP here. And I'm going to click on this first packet here. And actually, now that I've identified what this is, just for the sake of analyst workflow, one thing I can do is I can right click here, I can say packet comment, and th this is the first PHP, I can say this is the start of EK session, just to sort of show this feature. And so now this packet comment is stored in the packet, and so anyone else that looks at this PCAT once I save it will have this comment here so they can easily identify where the malicious traffic begins. Okay, anyway, what I care about here is the HTTP and the user agent. So I can see that it's okay, Mozilla 5 makes sense, Windows NT 5.1, I know this to be Windows XP, Gecko is the rendering engine used in Firefox, uh, date year is 2007, so this is obviously quite old, and I have no clue what this Bon Echo thing is. So let's look it up. I can right click here, I can say copy value, and then I can go back to Google and I can search for this string and if I click on this useragentstring.com site which is a very good site for trying to identify user agent strings I know that the version of this was uh, Bon Echo 2.0.0.3 pre and as we can see here this matches this and this is pretty much the exact user agent string that we found and it'll tell me that Bon Echo is a developer preview release of the next generation Firefox browser of course, this was next generation back from 2007, so quite old. So we've now identified the host name of this computer, what operating system it's running, and what browser it's using, assuming, of course, that the user, user agent string can be trusted, which it probably can. Um, so the final thing that I want to do is I want to carve out only the packets pertaining to my malicious traffic. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to set a display filter here. This is the IP address of my compromised host. What I also want is the IP address that it's communicating with, which is this one. So I'm going to say ip.adder equals 104.18.40.172. And by saying and, this will get me only packets with both of them. So there we go. So now I have all the malicious traffic. Now what this doesn't include is the domain is the DNS query to, which identifies the domain name. So I'm going to modify this to add one thing. I'm going to say or dns.query.name equals I know this was service.telepizza.com. And so there we go. Now I've got the DNS request. So now a future analyst looking at this PCAP can, will not have to go through all the same rigmarole that I did. They will have only the relevant packets to them. Now I need to be able to save this. So I can go to File, Export Specified Packets, and you can see here, this will let me save it, um, only showing my displayed packets, which is 2063. I'm not actually going to do this, but basically this will allow me to carve out only the relevant packets. So there you go. That is how to use Wireshark to perform some basic PCAP analysis. Thanks for watching.